Spark Books here. Today, I'm going to explain the book, Do I Make Myself Clear? by Harold Evans. Take care, enjoy the book, and have a nice day. Do I Make Myself Clear? 2017, offers a much needed look at why clear and concise messages are, now more than ever, so important. There is an overwhelming abundance of content these days, and yet finding the truth has never been more difficult. Politicians and marketing executives use deliberately misleading words that obscure the truth and leave us confused and distrustful. Other times, bad writing simply leaves us scratching our heads. If we hope to better understand the facts, we need more people who can deliver clear and meaningful writing. Key idea number one, bad writing abounds online, but excellent, clear writing can be learned. If you've always enjoyed outstanding journalism, you probably looked forward to reading the New Republic magazine. Its print issues were always well-written and entertaining. Shakespeare's career shows how a devoted writer can grow. You can too. We'll discuss several suggestions and techniques you may use today in the sparks ahead. In 2012, Facebook co-founder Chris Hughes bought the journal and transferred it online, hiring new writers. A cryptic news announcement described the new enterprise as a cross-functional collaboration to align themselves from a metabolic viewpoint as a vertically integrated digital media organization, confirming many people's concerns about quality. Unfortunately, this nonsense is everywhere online. Another example, the Financial Times claims their web content improves measured learning outcomes. What now? When print newspapers were the main source of information, writers had limited room to convey their point. The writer had to be clear and concise. Online content, especially clickbait and fake news, uses lots of words to say little. Websites, Facebook, TV news, and academia all have bad writing. This isn't necessary. Contrary to popular belief, writing is not a birthright. If you work hard, writing may be improved like any other talent. Shakespeare worked to enhance his writing. Shakespeare's career shows how a devoted writer can grow. You can too. We'll discuss several suggestions and techniques you may use today in the sparks ahead. Key idea number two, no standard writing patterns and readability indices, but don't overuse them. The proper sentence structures you learned in grade school are fine but writing that uses them all will be boring. It's important to remember that a sentence's main purpose is to represent a full notion in multiple ways. Classic Sentence Constructions Guide. They arrange your subject, verb, and predicate to clarify your thought. However, removing the subject, verb, and predicate leaves a usable statement. One-word sentences can terminate paragraphs. Rejoice, see? Writers are advised to simplify. This is also true, and you should always look for unnecessary adverbs and adjectives to simplify your phrases. But you shouldn't write boring short sentences. Communicate clearly. If you bore the reader, you're not communicating adequately. Such sentences bore. Another unreliable guide is a readability index. Since the late 1800s, experts have studied plain writing and developed formulas like the Flesh Reading Ease Index, which rates a piece's readability. The Flesh Kincaid grade level indicates how much schooling the reader needs to understand the writing. The Gunning Fogg Index and Dale Chow formula also consider how many difficult words you use. Flesh's formula shows that the optimum sentence has 18 words, but these analytics can't tell you everything. You could write nonsense and get good index scores if you used basic language and short sentences. Key idea number three, avoid passive voice and front loading. Harold Evans edited Norman Mailer, E.L. Doctorow, and Gore Vidal. They all write well and effectively, yet each has his distinct style. Most authors avoid passive voice. The passive voice wastes words and removes the command and urgency of the active voice. It was determined that the next employee meeting should be conducted on Monday as a passive voice memo. The memo can plainly indicate, the next employee meeting is on Monday, in the active voice. The passive voice can be used to express tact or delicacy around a delicate topic. The passive voice can emphasize the receiver rather than the doer by putting the receiver at the beginning of a statement. So if your story is about a baby, rather than a president, you might write, the baby was kissed by the president. Avoid starting statements with dozens of words. Typical example, due to inhospitable climate, weak infrastructure, multiple terrorist factions fighting for bribes, and a lack of refrigerated vehicles, the administration had trouble transporting food to the village. This line requires the reader to remember 20 words and a list of problems before understanding the issue. First stating the problem and then the reasons is clearer. Key idea number four. Examine your sentences for adverbs and parasitical prepositions. Writing using needless words is common in academic, bureaucratic, political, and technological settings. These unnecessary words might be used to sound smart or trendy, or to confuse the reader. Abstract nouns follow, 
These undefined words don't clarify your sentences. Regard, indication, facilities, and issue. Specify, instead of taking issue, tell us how you feel. Believe it or not, voting proposals are often constructed to confuse voters into supporting laws they would otherwise oppose. Adverbs, adjectives, parasitical prepositions, and abstract nouns clutter confused language. Stephen King famously observed, the road to hell is paved with adverbs. Thus, limit adjectives and eliminate adverbs. Adverbs like exactly, precisely, and truly are usually unnecessary. Say $5 instead of exactly $5. Adjectives like precise and accurate are adverbs without li and should be used sparingly. Writers must communicate clearly. When she does this successfully, she avoids superlatives. Explaining why an incident was shocking is better than calling it shocking. Parasitical prepositions are pointless too. These follow useful words and add nothing. Up and out are prevalent. Instead of writing, let's meet up at the cafe and test out the new app. Try, let's meet at the cafe and test the new app. Abstract nouns follow. These undefined words don't clarify your sentences. Regard, indication, facilities, and issue. Specify, instead of taking issue, tell us how you feel. Key idea number five, avoiding dry, mechanical language and overusing knots makes writing clear and engaging. Writers avoid double negatives, avoid forgetting that when communicating, see, style, three options, loose sentences are conversational and mirror how people talk, periodic sentences are tight, snappy, and effective at highlighting a point, and balanced sentences are more symmetrical and orderly. This balanced statement makes its argument calmly, unlike a periodic sentence. You can even avoid knots by turning negative statements into positive ones when appropriate. Writers should tell readers what's happening, not what's not. Quality sentences are usually clearer and require fewer words. Instead of it is unlikely that the fees will not be hiked next year, use the fees will likely increase next year. Assertive writing is always more interesting, significant, and intelligible. Dry, mechanical language is another writing mistake. Good writing flows. Like music, diversity is good. You can change shape, function, and style to keep your writing interesting. Simple and complex sentences exist. Good writing blends these. So initially use a few basic lines, like she got in the car and drove away, to pull the reader in, then use a longer, more sophisticated and rewarding statement, or vice versa. Statements, orders, questions, and exclamations can modify your function. Reader, why not interject questions occasionally? Style, three options. Loose sentences are conversational and mirror how people talk. Periodic sentences are tight, snappy, and effective at highlighting a point, and balanced sentences are more symmetrical and orderly. This balanced statement makes its argument calmly, unlike a periodic sentence. Key idea number six, beware zombie nouns, verbose flesh eaters, and stale formulations. Parasitic prepositions are annoying, but zombie nouns and flesh eaters are worse. If you want your writing to sound fresh and distinctive, avoid cliches. Good writing requires rephrasing cliches like blazing inferno, hammered out a bargain, last ditch effort, pool of blood, and others. Professor Helen Sword of the University of Auckland invented the term zombie noun for verbs that have become deadly, sentence ruining nouns. The verbs implement, document, and authorize are now zombie nouns. Ironically, this zombification is called nominalization. Zombies attack adjectives and create superfluous words like applicability and forgetfulness. When writing about an innovation or someone's imagination, zombies may be inescapable, but it's essential to search your work and double-check any term ending in Asian, ants, mont, ment, ants, or cyan, to clarify, erase or replace such terms with the original word. Flesh eaters kill sentences. Flesh eaters are overly wordy statements, in possession of or concerning the topic of our popular examples. Contracts are hard to read because they contain flesh eaters. Avoid overused terms like flesh eaters. If you want your writing to sound fresh and distinctive, avoid cliches. Good writing requires rephrasing cliches like blazing inferno, hammered out a bargain, last ditch effort, pool of blood, and others. Key idea number seven, good writing can combat post-truth culture if we care about meaning. In 1984, George Orwell created Newspeak, a language that devalues words and stifles ideas. Orwell's tyrannical regime plans to have everyone speak Newspeak by 2050. Recent occurrences have proven that politicians are dangerously manipulating language, therefore we may be ahead of schedule. Emptying words of their meaning is a vital step on the road to autocratic rule, wrote New York Times columnist Roger Cohen. Cohen commented on Trump's claim that he won a landslide win and that the media are among the most dishonest human beings on planet. 
On the Diane Rehm Show, Tea Party member Scotty Nell Hughes observed, People claim facts are facts, but they're not actually facts. Trump and other politicians often use challengeable and questionable to cast out on facts. The political deception was warned against by humanitarian Hannah Arendt and satirist Jonathan Swift. They distinguished between lying to avoid difficulty and lying to disempower facts and establish a fictional narrative. Thus, strong writing is crucial to countering these truth attacks. We must use the appropriate words and care about their meaning to preserve the truth. Know when to use effect or effect, continual or continuous, loan or lend, and rain or rain. Key idea number eight, politicians and banks profit from lousy writing and damaging policy. As recent events demonstrate, shoddy writing may cost billions. English can be nice too. It's crucial to battle for the truth today. The 2007 recession shows how lousy writing can hurt. According to writer and Financial Times editor Jillian Tett, banks construct subprime loan package details in convoluted and impenetrable jargon to confuse clients and regulators. Read the fine print of a CDO or CIV, SIV. Customers have no recourse if they don't know what they're getting. If regulators don't comprehend what's going on, they can't stop the bank's money-making activities. Thus, sloppy writing brought down the global financial system, leading thousands to lose their homes and savings. Former political wordsmith Barton Swaim said politicians prefer meaningless jargon. It's usually to avoid taking a stand or buy time. Politics shoddy writing masks worse issues. Political organizations use deceptive language to attack climate change activists. Climate change is a political agenda which aims to regulate every area of our lives, say Texas Republicans. Republicans have also misrepresented the Affordable Care Act since 2009, they notoriously named it death panels to kill seniors. English can be nice too, it's crucial to battle for the truth today. Write clearly, language impacts our thoughts and perceptions, for good and ill, politicians and banks sometimes use obfuscation to hide their goals, defend clarity. You can write clearly and concisely by following a few easy rules, which benefits us all. To view more content like this, subscribe. Don't forget to like and turn on notifications. The channel really benefits from it. I appreciate you being here.